Hi, this is Andy Turner, the Education Technologist at Illinois College. Today I wanted to show how to connect a remote control to an audio video system and how that works from a technical standpoint. Today I will demonstrate how to use two different software programs to communicate with an external piece of hardware on Mac OS 10. This is 10.7, I do believe. Upgraded it to Lion. Uh, no major problems with Lion so far. I tried to get this to work with Windows 8 and 7, 64-bit, uh, but the USB to RS-232 serial adapter uh, just refuses to work correctly, so having to do this on Mac, Luckily on Mac there is the QuickTime screen recording tool. So I will show in Mac's MSP one software program how to communicate to another software program, in this case processing, which has some code in one external library that basically is a dialect of Java. And the Java application is being used in this case because it provides a rich graphical interface with networking capabilities. So if you see on the left, you have UDP, which is User Datagram Protocol, which is a, a Layer 3 network protocol uh, that we're going to be using, very, very down-to-earth, so to speak, networking protocol, it's just pushing bits from one place to another, whether that's over copper wire or over the air. In this case, it's uh, neither. It's just going from an inter-process communication from this program to that program. Now, when I press this button on this graphical interface, if you look over to the right, you will see I'm depressing the mouse. I'm letting up on the mouse. And I can depress the mouse let up on the mouse and I have it on one and a monitor two monitor three to computer one VCR and then maybe laptop and then you would drag and drop those two devices I haven't built the whole user interface yet but this is a proof of concept that anyone can use to get started this looks complex but I only edited probably half of this code and I spent last you know last summer looking at this for about a month um, I gave a talk at ITT Technical Institute uh, where I taught there for uh, just one semester as an adjunct to describe the the OSI model which is layers you know one through seven uh, we're operating at layers uh, seven and three uh, in this in this tutorial Layer 7 is going to be the rich user interface or the graphical user interface, the GUI. And the layer 3 is going to be uh, uh, the layer 7 implemented in Java and layer 3 implemented in a protocol known as Open Sound Control. And Open Sound Control is just one protocol to send audio over the network. It also sends raw control data for video systems as well. And that's what we're looking at today as a video system. I'm hooking this user interface up to an Extron scaling presentation switcher which will let your analog uh, computer output such as your VGA port or your HDMI output uh, to connect to a projector but then to switch it over automatically I've created this interface with the red and the blue button where we can hide away all of the complexity and simply add a series of buttons where when I press the red button that changes the switcher to say the laptop when I press when I press the blue button I get the laptop when I press the red button I get the computer or say the VCR for example so you could create a, a naming convention where the buttons are arranged similar to where the devices are in the room and then you can just connect devices from thing to thing that you would like to happen. And so just to go above that program one layer higher, 
this would be the mobile app that you would have on your phone or tablet that would send wirelessly to this. This could be an application. As you can see in Max, what you can do is build an application. And that just creates a .app file that will run on, on any Mac. You just hit build. You can even push this to the App Store and have that available on the iOS uh, Apple App Store. So the processing has an Android mode so that you can change over here to a different mode. In this case, you have Android, uh, CoffeeScript, and then you would have JavaScript. I think I've already installed the Android mode. Can't do that while I'm running. I have this, this patch running, but you would see Android as a mode here. So processing is one way to build the Android app, and Max is one way to build the iOS app. The way that the code works in Java is really the scope of this talk. Uh, at the top in Java, we have the import statement, open sound control for processing. P5 was a library written by an individual uh, that you can Google for and find. The networking comes with that, and so we're instantiating a new object instance called OSCP5 from the class OSCP5, and then we're instantiating a an address off of the net address class called my remote location. The remote location in this case is the other program and the interprocess communication piece. We have a click variable that's a, either true or false, and then we have a color, 255, which is an 8-bit color, which is white. Zero would be black. If you had an RGB color, that'd be, uh, if you have this full red, it would be uh, full red, no blue, no green, so it would be 255, zero, zero. Now we have the size of the window, 400 by 400. That's X, Y from the top left to the bottom left. It would be top left, zero, bottom left, 400. So when you design your application, you must keep in mind the screen size of the device that you're going to push it to, whether that's a tablet, you know, 7-inch, 10-inch, or an, you know, an iPhone, or maybe a small Android, or one of the large galaxies. So you would have basically a, a routine where you have a setup. Now the setup has a new instance of OSCP5, like we've imported here. We've called that a, a object OSC, OSCP5, and it has two parameters. This, which just sets the scope of its data access to itself. And then you have 5554, which is the port on localhost, 127.001. TCP IP 4 there, the port 5554 is the port on that localhost address, which means send out, I'm listening to that port. So this could be a device that's communicated to from a mobile application across the campus, across the, the world. So that would need to, you know, you'd need to have security in mind in that regard when you open up this port. You would need to specify a single IP address, in this case, this IP address of this computer or the device. You could even set up user authentication or something like that. So then we have a draw routine that sets the background to black, zero. Then we draw a rectangle where wherever the mouse is, draw that plus minus 50 for the top uh, left. Then we have the mouse Y, which is the mouse Y coordinate. It's a keyword in Java and processing, minus 50. So in other words, draw a 50 by 50 box and start it out at 100 by 100. So in this application, wherever my mouse is, it's going 50 to the left and 50 to the bottom, 50 to the, to the left and 50 to the, the top in this case, excuse me, 50 to the top. So it's drawing from the center, 50 to the left, 50 to the top, and then it's making 100 by 100 square. So my mouse will be in the center of the square. And then fill it with the clicked color. And then the clicked color we set up here was white. but down here, I've changed the color when I click it to red. So 255.00 is red, no green, no blue. So when I click this, you can see temporarily it changes to, to red. It's really quick. Just an indicator that it's been pressed. Down here, you can see the ons are getting catching the on and the off. And the way I implemented that was from 
the X position, the Y position, position and time. I have clicked is true, and when it's true, the clicked color is black, so in other words, go away, uh, disappear from the screen, and then the, at the X position and the, and the Y position, draw a, uh, a square at those locations and fill that with red. And when you do that, add the message 1 to my message, and my message is the object instantiated from the class OSC message and route that to the slash on address. So it would be localhost colon 5554 slash on, much like a URL for a website. In this case, it's a web application. So at slash on, you're routing the message one. In this program, Max, you're telling one to be received into its port 5554. And you can see up here, the UDP receive is just what happens. So I'm sending that one and the zero when I let up on the mouse, one when I press down on the mouse, I'm saying route the slash on message, and then when it's a one, select one, light up the button just to get some visual indications there. You can see that when I press down the button, it's yellow on the left there. And then when that button is hit, go to this over the serial port A, which is USB to RS-232, at 9600 kbps, 8 data bits, 1 stop bit, and no parity, no flow control is insinuated and then on through this down to the formatted message. If you want to see the formatted output we can click that, clear the console, start to pull the serial port at a metronome of 100 milliseconds, in other words 10 times a second, pull that serial port so that when I send the message by clicking this button, I get the message back from the device. You've told me to change my input to channel 4, which channel 4 would be blue. I think we said the blue would be the laptop on the lectern that you're at in your classroom. So if we wanted to change that back to the computer or say the VCR, I would press this button and then that would say, okay, now I'm listening on channel 1 for video. I'm going to go ahead and send the video out to the projector from your VCR now. I've stopped my VCR tape now, and VHS tape, and now I'm going to go back to the laptop to show my slides again, for example, say, theoretically in a classroom. So I can use my mobile application where I would have the blue and the red here maybe to say VCR or laptop. Now I will go over here to say blue, for example. I will click that to show my laptop, and now it responds with, okay, now I'm listening on channel 4 again. So now I'm going to send the video out to the projector uh, from the laptop. And then you can have volume sliders, things like this. But this is a fully working code base, open source, that will let you connect devices to devices for no cost. This Max MSP patch was created with the demo. You can get the academic version for about 250 You can also integrate this application into a an application uh, you know for free really uh, where you don't even need to register Max MSP if you can write the application in 30 days. There is, the Max MSP was created by uh, one uh, partner from a pair of two uh, out in California. The other partner in the business, Cycling74, uh, he created this one, David Zaccarelli. Miller Puckett was the other partner. He created an open source free version of this program called Pure Data, which you can find at puredata.info, and that will let you use a similar situation where you can check that out. So, hope you've enjoyed this talk. Thanks a lot, and check out my blog at educationtechnologist.blogspot.com. Thanks a lot.